Well, how great is ball? Doesn't get much better than travel around the Pac-12 conference until you do it with Ashley Adamson. Hmm. Ashley, welcome to the Training Camp Tour podcast. It's great to be here. I've been I've been just catching up on all of your previous podcasts, and I have been loving them. Oh, I love. It. How's your life? I mean, you just had another baby. <laughs> you just got off maternity leave. You jump right back into training camp. <laughs> Yeah, my life is, uh, it's good. There's a lot of exciting things going on right now. So uh, I, I preface all of this podcast by saying my brain is at like 30 to 32% of, mm. of operating capacity. So you can't hold me accountable <laughs> for, I know we're big about accountability in Berkeley. So yeah. I just want to throw that out there that um, if something comes out that doesn't quite seem right. Just know it's, it's that my, uh, my head isn't all quite there. I got but it you. is great to be here, Yogi. <laughs> I love this podcast, and I love you, and I love the Bears. I'm yeah. fired up for, for what we're doing today. Yeah, this is really good. Been all over the Pac-12 conference. You can check this out. Partnered up with Sirius XM College Sports. Really stoked for that partnership. You'll be able to listen to these conversations with Justin Wilcox, Chase Garbers, and even linebacker Evan Weaver, who are coming up here on this episode on Sirius XM College. And, of course, check it out on the Yogi Ross Show podcast, wherever you listen to your podcast. So... Cal, you've been here for a scrimmage. You've been around this program. You live in the Bay Area. Expectations, Justin Wilcox, for you coming into now another year. He's kind of a veteran coach. You could even argue yeah. it's at, some time, at some point in this conference now. It seems like he's been here for a while, entering his third season. What do you think? I was just saying that to Kate Scott yesterday, that I can't believe this is only Justin's third year here. It seems like he's been here longer, which is a good thing, I think, because his, his fingerprints and, and who he is is so embedded now into this program, and I think we've been able to see that. I remember we sat here a year ago and, and did this podcast, and you know, I said that the, the funny thing about training camp is wherever you are, you're like, oh, man, they might go in the natty. <laughs> like where I was, I was all in on the Bears last year, and I will say that I'm I'm more excited about them this year than I was last year. Even um, I think the thing will be, and we'll, we'll talk to the guys about this today. But they started three and zero, right? The last couple of years, and there's been a ton of excitement, and they've hit some road bumps, lost some games they felt like they really shouldn't have, and then won some games that were like, oh, holy cow. Um, and the, the question is going to be, can they consistently? win and can they figure out a ridiculously hard Pac-12 North um, and a tough schedule I mean they go to UW in week two which is here we go you know yeah and and so I think there's there's a lot of unknowns and and everyone says okay we know the defense is going to be great they obviously lost some pieces but we know the defense is going to be great the question mark is is the offense um, and I think Chase Garbers we're going to talk to him a little bit but I, I I'm excited to see where he's at after a full year of, of, of being the guy and actually being the guy this year yeah I think it's I think it's fun I mean this program they have these wristbands where it says obsessed with your craft and the next step which is to take the next step which is win a bowl game win the Pac-12 North potentially win the Pac-12 title and obviously beyond that when I think about it when you get out of the like 10,000 foot view of like the North is loaded UW CFP caliber team um, and just kind of down the line, Oregon, Justin Herbert, Stanford, David Shaw, Washington State, Mike Leach, it, it, Cal's kind of a, uh, you throw him in there, you're not. Mm -hmm. But you think about how they played. They beat UW. I called the Stanford game. They've been in it the last two years. Stanford has lost a ton of productivity on both sides of the football. Washington State, they've had a handle on They smoked them two years ago. And then last year, lost a tight one on the road, but just couldn't score points, hurt themselves. Like, if you think about that, Oregon has had their way with them, and, and Justin Herbert um, has, has played great every time they've played. But when you, when you dive into it, you're like, yeah, Cal winning the Pac-12 North isn't like a foreign concept. Totally. No, I, I agree with you completely. And my question for you, Yogs, is that I, I know you have a, a good relationship with, with Justin Wilcox, and I know that you, you guys go way back. What have you seen from him? Because being a head coach is, is much different than being a coordinator, than being a position guy. And, and the ask of you and, and all of the things that go into being the CEO of, of a program, what have you seen from him now as, as he's grown in that role and, and heading into year three? Well, I think one of the coolest things about when you talk to guys about, did you set out as a kid and you're like, I want to be a head coach? A lot of them haven't that have had a lot of success. Chris Peterson being one. Like, he didn't even want the Boise State job. He was going to Colorado to be the OC for Dan Hawkins, but he was like, I guess. Offered to me the second time. I just have to take it. So he took it. I think David Shaw wasn't, like, set out to go be the Stanford head coach's only dream in life. I think for Justin, same deal. Like, he was just really talented. 
and understood from really gifted head coaches at a bunch of different stages of his career. Right, you can go to uh, Coach Christ at Wisconsin right before coming here. You can go to what he went through at SC with that program and the turmoil there. UW, rebuild, Tennessee. Like he's been around a lot. So I think what's beautiful is he's a sum of his of his parts. You know, and he's a product of the process. And I think he takes that type of humility and just re- reflects it to his team. They read books. They talk about things outside of football. That's going to happen when you go to this institution. But they also really love the craft and their detail and their discipline. And that's him. You know, he's got such a high standard for his integrity. Look at how he grew up with his dad. Right? He's, he's a Hall of Famer, and he calls him like a Hall of Farmer. Mm-hmm. Right? Like he, those principles, I think, are reflected. So I look at him now, he, he, and I don't think he really took long to settle in as a head coach. But still, it's his third year. He's even more settled in. Like he, He's got this thing dialed. Not surprised that he got an extension. Not surprised other programs wanted him. They should. He's that type of guy. So I think he brings great stability, and he, I think he gives him a real chance this year with a revamped offense that makes some staff change. It'll be interesting to watch, and a quarterback who's a year older. It's the old adage that the, the, the team takes on the personality of its head coach, and I know that he wants his guys to be tough and smart, which to me is it like embodies what Justin Wilcox is. So totally. it's been it's been cool to watch, and I you know I think Cal fans. He talked to a lot of Cal fans, and it just feels like so much of it is about fit, and it just feels like Justin Wilcox gets this place, it gets him, and it's a you know it's a good marriage. I agree with that. And I, th- I think and I love the phrase "earn it," which is kind of like their hashtag on social media. Mm-hmm. And I also love like the, the likability factor in entertainment, which we know is real. Like you see somebody on TV and you're like, oh, Ashley, she's cool. Like, I really like her. I want to watch more. I think the same thing with Justin. He's so nice. He's so kind. He's so great. She's a great competitor. And it's going to offend Mike Yammer, our colleague, but he's, he might have the best hair in the Pac-12 <laughs> conference. So uh, let's get out of the way and bring on the head coach, Coach Justin Wilcox. Well, there's a lot of talented coaches in the Pac-12 conference. None of them have the hair of Justin Wilcox. <laughs> None of them have the acumen. Uh, none of them are probably the athlete as well, to be quite honest with you. I know about you. that. Talk to Ashley about it in the open. Coach, welcome to the show, man. It's great to be with you. Yeah. Well, we're excited to be here. It's college football season. Yeah. What, what's training camp like when you get into the doldrums as a coach? You've been around for a couple times now. Have you settled in to that part of it? Is it way yeah. better as the head coach than the assistant? Yeah, I think there's a fine balance between getting the work in and kind of challenging yourself to stay focused each and every day because there is monotony in training camp sometimes. And I think, I know for us as coaches, we got to keep it fresh in some regards, but you also have to push through some of that. And so we challenge the guys on that all the time. And we got some exercises that we, you know, kind of make things fun. We have a team competition going on, the the uh, the Bear Olympics, which have been a big hit. But uh, they've done a really good job in practice. And uh, we have, we're about halfway through right now. And It'll, it's going to continue to get harder, but uh, the guy's attitude has been great. Whose idea was the slip and slide? Um, we actually have a, a committee. Uh, I'm at the commissioner of the Bear Olympics. We have a committee, and I can't talk about who that is. Uh, we also have judges, but they got together and spent a lot of time this summer on preparing the Bear Olympics, and one of the one of the events was a slip and slide, which was a big hit. I saw the social media video, but I did not see you partaking. So I just wanted to see. Yeah, well, the commissioner doesn't. You know, yeah. the commissioner doesn't compete. I, 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 yeah, yeah. The the threat of injury was there, so I I rule on uh, some of the uh, you know complaints that we get from mm-hmm. time to time from the team. So that's my role in the Bear Olympics. I love that. All right, next year I want to be involved. I want to compete. You uh-huh. let me play wide receiver in spring. Yeah. We well, got to be. I mean, you either all captains? in or all out. We don't do part time. Yeah, think we could be captains. Yeah, but you got to be here every day. I mean, this is not a. You know, you don't just waltz in and all of a sudden get to be a part of Bear Olympics. We maybe could have you spectate or maybe be a guest judge, but I don't know if we can put you on a team. We'll have to. I'll discuss it with the committee. Okay. <laughs> Appreciate that. All right. So speaking of the committee, uh, last year we talked about it a lot. Ashley had the book. You had yeah. your team read a book over the last couple of years. Um, love that. It seems as though here, clearly there's an emphasis on things and how you can learn off the field. Your committee, your leadership committee, has mm-hmm. also read the book Legacy, yeah. which is extremely well-known, New York Times bestseller, all about the all blacks in New Zealand. New Zealand, which you need to go visit. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's amazing. One of these days. But I'm curious... Um, what have you seen things from whether it's legacy mm-hmm. or previous things you've given guys like how have you noticed it actually impact the team outside of just forcing them to think differently well i think the big thing you know we we talk about a lot is and it's a key word for every program is culture right and what does that mean it's our 
kind of how we act every day at the end of it. I mean, our behaviors on a day-to-day basis, what we expect of each other, the, the norms of the program. And I think uh, one of the neat things to see in the last couple of years is watch, you know, when we got here, we kind of had these expectations for how we were going to do things. And we enforced them as coaches. And, you know, the players did it because that was what was expected of them. And now you start to see the players enforcing them, and those are their own expectations. So I think uh, that's what's really cool to see. And we got a lot of really good leaders on the team, and some are vocal and some aren't, and some are freshmen and some are seniors. And uh, there's really no profile to be a leader, but I feel like those guys have really taken on what we're asking of them in terms of how to do things and the behaviors we're looking for. And we still make mistakes, there's no doubt about that, but I think overall they've done a really nice job of that. To that point, Coach, we were talking to Elijah Hicks yesterday. Uh, one of my new favorite players in the Pac-12 after our chat with him. Kate Scott was here. My favorite Golden Bear. No offense to, to uh, you. Mine but, too. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, and we were asking him, I, I said, what, what is it that you like about Justin? Because he was saying that, that you were uh, his dude. And he said that you challenge them, not just on the football field, but in little small things everyday life. Like he notices that we're on our phone too much. And he tells us to, hey, download an app and see how much screen time you actually have. Or we've got a new elevator. And he says, I'm going to challenge you to take the stairs. Don't take that elevator. Take the stairs. And he says it's all the little things that just show that you care in a different way than just the product that's on the football field. So uh, my question is, is that something that, is that who you have always been? Is that something that you intentionally try to be to draw out that part of the guys um, away from the football field? Because I think every time I talk to any of your players, that's something to talk about. Well, I think... uh... I hope, you know, for me, it's like in the end of this, like the X's and O's and the football part we all love, but we really are here to try and make a lasting impact on them and have a positive lasting impact on them. And um, I think it's a win-win proposition because when when people – and, and uh, – you know, I got to be honest, a lot of those things are for myself as well. You know, I'm reminding myself to stay off my phone and take the stairs and, you know, hoods off in the building, get your eyes up. And uh, so I think it's it's not just me asking that of them, but of challenging myself. And so uh, I think it's just really important because I, it, the more you can kind of create these good habits, the better you're going to be in, in school, the better you're going to be in football, and the more accountable you'll be to the team. And so I think it's, it's really a win-win proposition. And so... Um, I appreciate guys like Elijah because he, he loves that stuff, you know, and, and some guys take to it quicker and earlier than others. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer for somebody to maybe see it. And sometimes, you know, guys don't see it until they're done with college and have gone through some other things. But uh, we got a lot of really insightful guys and who are trying to do things right. And uh, it's fun to coach guys like that because you see them grow and uh, kind of develop, you know, daily and weekly and monthly and, and that's uh, that brings joy to coaches because it does carry over from the meeting to, to school, to the community, and then football. I mean, it, it really does. Those character traits are pretty interesting. If you think of Jared Goff, one of the more prolific players here. Program was in transition. He still came. Elijah Hicks, program mm-hmm. was in transition. You came. He had already decided he wanted to continue his athletic career here. Curious now, with specifically on this defense, you've got guys that have played at a really high level, and now they're old guys. Mm-hmm. You know, like they didn't just come in and learn a new system and play at a high level, become really athletic and play at a high level. But you got one of the leading tacklers in all of college football at Mike Backer. Mm-hmm. You've got clearly a secondary that's talented for days, getting a lot of pub right now. What what's the standard for them right now? How have they raised it, and and what do you expect from that side of the ball? Well, uh, the the really neat thing about that group is nobody talks in you know in our building really about last year or statistics because we had some really good moments and played pretty well, but there were times uh, that we didn't perform as well, and so they're all uh, you know really really motivated individuals, and so again, it kind of comes back to the character traits like they're nothing's ever quite good enough. And uh, that's us as coaches. I mean, coaches like, are like that in general, uh, that you're always looking for more and, and pushing and, you know, there's always something to work on. But they genuinely believe it, you know, and I, I think that's what makes that group unique. And I'm, I'm not at all worried about them being complacent. If you go out to practice and watch them, I mean, the best player on our team, the best players on our team are our best practice players. And so – what an example for the rest of the guys in the program and the young players to see that. And I just can't tell you how valuable that is. And so I'd love to say that it's just how we 
talk as a program and it is, but I think a lot of programs do. It's about developing that culture and what's expected and then bringing the right type of people in who will, uh, who will live that way. And those guys have, and, you know, again, I, in terms of what the statistics are going to be defensively and all that, I don't know. Uh, I know our guys are going to be prepared to play and they're going to play extremely hard. And, uh, you know, that's all we can ask for. We know the defense is going to be good in your mind. What's the biggest unknown specifically? What's the biggest unknown coming into this season? Well, I think, uh, you know, if you look at kind of each phase of the game, you know, we talked about it at, uh, at length early in camp, you know, defensively, it's like finding the consistency and performance and expecting, you know, a certain standard. And uh, we have some veterans on that side of the, side of the ball, as Yogi mentioned, some really talented players. So continue to hold ourselves to that and, uh, look for that consistency. Offensively, I mean, I think there's some young talent and really excited about the guys when talking about receiver and running back and tight end. we got potential, and that's a really exciting word because they have the ability to do some things, just haven't quite had the opportunities or experiences of, of doing it yet. But I know they're hungry, and they got the ability, and it's exciting to watch them kind of grow into this. And so I think, you know, those guys doing that, the defense kind of being the veteran group, I, I really feel like, you know, it's a great time for us as a team. And I know they're, we have extremely high expectations for ourselves. And it, right now it's all a matter of, uh, you know, preparing ourselves for the season and putting this work into fall camp, which they've done so far. We've got to continue to do that. But I'm just looking forward to watching these guys continue to grow. I love it, Coach. We know you got to head to a staff meeting. Middle of training camp. Can't wait to be around you all season long on the Pac-12 Networks. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Coach Wilcox, number one, love the guy. Obviously, incredible football acumen. Also, incredible shape. And as a coach, you got to be in shape. You got to be in shape. It's a long season for the coach, too. It's a long season. I know it's a long season for us. I don't know how you get through it. But for me, Ash, I do it with coffee. And I do it with Kona Red Coffee. If you're not familiar with it, just check out KonaRed.com. And I know you love Hawaii, even though you didn't grow up in Hawaii. But that's where this coffee is grown in the volcanic mountain slopes. Can I tell you a story about Kona Coffee? I'm ready for it. So I went to Hawaii uh, two summers ago. And on the way back, it was my mom's birthday. And I hadn't gotten her a birthday present. And I'm in the gift shop. And I'm like, what am I going to get her? And Kona Coffee was, was featured prominently in the gift shop in the airport. And so I bought her some. And I brought it home and my mom is a coffee connoisseur like no one drinks mm. coffee more than my mom and she said it was the best coffee she's ever had in her entire life so Kona Red there it is I mean Ashley's mom said it like I didn't even have to I, that's, say how it's as proud big of a I deal am. as it gets yeah exactly <laughs> and of course they are a proud partner of the Yogi Ross show uh, big fans and what I love about them every morning I wake up and I watch film and I could either rock the premium coffee beans and get a cold brew. They got these cans. Ash, I'm going to make sure I get a couple of them sent to you. And they even have a juice, a Hawaiian cascara mm. juice. No waste with Kona Red Coffee. If you want to go out and get it, go to Vaughn's, Albertsons, Pavilions, Ralph's, Bristol Farms, Sprouts, and many more. Or just go to KonaRed.com. That being said, for a guy who doesn't necessarily need coffee to get going, but I think he'll really like it because he's a fan of Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold loves this. Is our next guest, quarterback Chase Garbers. Had a chance to talk to you, head coach Justin Wilcox. Now we get a chance to talk to the quarterback, Chase Garbers. Chase, first and foremost, you've been in training camp for a little while now. Yep. Biggest difference for you now where you are in your career midway through camp versus that first training camp you were in where every single day was literally something new for you? Yeah, I'm just a lot more comfortable than I was two years ago. Like you said, you know, being a true freshman in training camp, head was spinning every day. So I think just that comfort level and, you know, the command that I have of this offense is just something new. We got to see you scrimmage for the first time uh, in fall camp yesterday. And one of the things that, that stands out to me when I watch you guys, obviously, is your defense is one of the best in, yeah. in the Pac-12, you know, certainly the secondary, one of the best in the country. Going against them every day, uh, I'm sure at this point in camp you're a little bit exhausted of seeing the same guys, but but what does it do to prepare you for, for what you're going to see in the Pac-12 in this year? I think it's great for our offense. You know, as I believe our defense is one of the top defenses in the nation, so going against them every day, you know, you're not going to see the level of structure and complexity as our defense shows us, you know, week in and week out, so you know, having to go against Evan Weaver and our defensive backs and our defensive line every day, especially for a young, kind of unproven offense, is good for us. 
I kind of imagine, like, if I was playing on that offense and you hear how good the defense is, and if we're just going to be truth tellers, like, you hear about your offense. And, like, last year there were struggles. There were turnovers. There were issues. Defense won some games. Offense played well at times. Called a couple of those games. Well, what's the group been like in, in the off season when you guys have been training together, you know, offense specifically, and how have you garnered a larger leadership role among the psyche, let alone the performance of that side of the ball? For, I mean, for, at least for the offense's perspective, I think as a group we've became a lot closer. Um, yeah, I mean, the defense pulled us out of some games and we did enough to win seven games last year. But I think after taking a step back and just kind of looking at the season as a whole, I think, you know, collectively the leaders of our offense, especially the offensive line and the wideout group with Nico and Jordan Duncan as the returners, I think we just all kind of, looked at ourselves and said we got to do a lot better this year and we've been working our tails off this offseason I think it showed so far in uh, fall camp you mentioned a couple of your receivers and obviously you guys have some talent at, at the wide receiver position is mm-hmm. there is there someone uh that you can call out that you feel like you've really connected with this offseason maybe timing wise or that you just have a comfort comfortability with I think Nico uh Remigio and Jordan Duncan uh they've been here the longest in the system so Obviously, there's that level of comfort, but I mean, this off season we really dialed it down, and we got a bunch of guys who just came off their redshirt season who are uh, doing really good things. Bo Baldwin, now he comes into your meeting room. What, what's the difference? What's it been like for you to have him every day in a meeting room, not just the offensive coordinator? It really hasn't been that different, except for just certain coaching drills, which is you know, it's nice as a quarterback. You don't want to really get switched up too much with uh, different coaches but having coach B in there is you know it's been a blessing especially going through spring and now fall camp with him just kind of getting in his mind I want to know about Chase not Chase the quarterback but Chase the Chase Garbers Uh, tell me something that people don't know about you give us a fun fact or like do you have a weird I don't know some sort of talent that we don't Um, know about I mean I'm pretty good at golf okay but I mean, that's, I don't know. We could get you and KJ yeah. Costello out there on the on yeah. the course, maybe. A little battle for the Axe Golf uh-huh. Tournament. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But um, fun fact. Um, I, know, I grew up with a hamster. I guess you grew that, up with a hamster. Yeah. What was that hamster's name? His name was Jeter. Jeter. Yeah. And we also have three cats okay. at my house. So. so were you a Yankees fan? No. Oh. Just when I was little, all of the pet animals' names would be named after athletes. So. What were the cats? Well, the cats aren't named after athletes, mm. actually, but one cat is named after, you know, the top brand Nike, so sorry, Under Armour. But, um, <laughs> and then we have Luke and then uh, AJ after AJ Green, because my dad went to Georgia. So That's pretty strong. That is strong. Those are some good names. All right, so what, what went on in your summer? Like quarterbacks, I feel like are always doing a lot of things. You go to summer camps. You know, your brother, I was with him at the Elite Eleven. Yep. Um, there, there's a lot happening in the summer space. What, what do you try to go do? You know, is it obviously spend time with your teammates, get to spend time with your family? I saw you out in Dallas yep. at the Elite Eleven. Yeah. Where did you? Where did you find time? Because I gotta imagine mm. your world as a quarterback is like just dialed. Like if I looked at your planner or your calendar, it'd be like boom, boom, boom. You're here at one of the top public institutions on planet Earth. Where did you find release points or points of growth in the off season for you? Non football, either or, way. Um, when, as you said, spending time with our teammates. Uh, you know, just kind of we're the only ones up here in the summer, so there's a lot of time to do that. And then, just as for myself, I mean, I think the coaching staff does a good job of kind of managing football and you know getting personal time with their players. So, you know, when we had that time, just going back to SoCal, spend time with my family. I obviously don't have to tell you, Chase, that the quarterback position gets as much scrutiny as any position in, in all of sports. Um, how do you deal with the pressure? What What is it about your mental makeup or what? Is, how do you approach that position? Because, you know, we always say that they get too much blame when things go wrong and too much credit when things go well. But how, how do you approach that pressure side of what you have to go through every week? I don't think there's a certain approach. It's just kind of who I've always been as a person. You know, I'm always going to be the first one to take the blame when something goes wrong and, you know, dish out the love when something goes right. So I think that's just how I was raised growing up, you know, with my parents. There's not really something special to it for me, at least. Coach talked about the book Legacy 
and how that was a deal for you guys in the off season, how some players read it, they talked about it. Did you dive into it at all and any thoughts around the all blacks and how you've allowed uh, that? I did not read it now. Are you a rugby fan at all? Uh, I've gotten to like rugby a little more since being up here. Nice. You kinda have to, right? Yeah. I mean, you've yeah. done a feature trash. You've seen Cal, it, Cal Rugby. If you, if you haven't checked out any Cal Rugby games, I, I highly recommend it. I've been to one game. Out. It's yeah. pretty it's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. Speaking of rugby, uh, we got a chance to talk to Lone Tailoa. Am I mm-hmm. mispronouncing his last name? Is that right? Close, Close enough. Close enough? Yeah. Okay, cool. One of my favorite things about him is that he's, you know, obviously this big bear of a guy, football mm-hmm. player, his hair is that... And then he has like the most beautiful voice and this wonderful Australian accent. But yeah. just there's something that like the juxtaposition of it was was making me laugh yesterday. But he was someone as we were watching scrimmage yesterday that that jumped out to me. Mm-hmm. Um, what what have you noticed from him and and kind of what he brings to the defense? Well, from last year to this year, I think there's been a big improvement with uh, Lone's uh, pass rushing skills and just him overall as a defensive line player. So. I've definitely noticed him a lot more this year in the backfield, which, I mean, you don't like to see as a quarterback, but it's awesome to see our defense making those plays. Yeah, and he has a rugby background. I asked him, I said, Do you have, which, which sport it was harder? And he said, rugby's more physical. Oh, you're, yeah. You're making, <laughs> yeah. Because you're tackling it with whatever it is. Like you're, no doubt I'm, about I'm feeling that. it in my neck and my shoulders and everywhere. So. Yeah. Oh, dude, I played rugby when I was in Australia. I used to live there when mm-hmm. I finished playing. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go probably be a professional rugby player because I get to do that, right? <laughs> And my first time playing, I never felt so unathletic because like everything's coming downhill at you and then they pitch the ball behind. The only yeah. rule is it kept you throw it backwards. Man, I was, I was, I felt so awkward. I lasted one game. I was done. Yeah. I played, I played in Dublin when I studied abroad in college oh, and really? it was it, because unlike any other sport that you play, like I ran track and played mm-hmm. basketball and there's the breaks, you know, and that's, yeah. I think one of the biggest differences obviously between football and rugby, you get to stop at rugby. You just keep going like it's yeah. like you just better be fast and you better go it, just, it doesn't stop but we digress yeah. yeah all right so we're gonna let you go here in a minute um but i want to finish up on a football note mm-hmm. you guys get going here pretty quick your schedule i think like for people that watch the game like it's it's not easy you're not like walking the park to kick off the season yep. you got an early pack 12 game and and it's on you're going up against some of the best passers that maybe the rest of the nation doesn't know and mm-hmm. mason fine and the quarterback at uc davis um so so that being said i'm curious for you mindset coming into the season how excited are you and what are you most looking forward to as, as truly for the first time arguably as a full-time starter day one well, I'm most excited to just start playing football again. Um, you know, quarterbacks might not say this, but I kind of miss getting hit a little bit in practice. You know, you just get tagged off, and it's, it's kind of lame, to be honest. But, yeah, I mean, you got to do it. But I'm really excited to just play against a different team and not our defense and just kind of get after it and start winning again. I love it. Yogi could lower a shoulder right now. If I mean, you want to do it? I, yeah, I won't tell Coach. <laughs> yeah, well, Kyle McRae might end my career if that <laughs> happened here. Wish you complete safety. Nothing but the best. I know, Ashley, and I cannot wait to talk to you throughout the season, man. Thank you. All right, that's Chase Garbers. How great is ball? Training camp tour. We'll be right back with somebody on the defensive side. All right, from the head coach's office, where we talk to Coach Wilcox. Love his office, by the way. Surfboard's big time. Talk to your quarterback. So now we're actually in the linebacker room, Ash. Have you been in the linebacker good in room? Here. No, it's my first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely not. Evan Weaver's first time. All American, Mr. Everything. Thanks for joining us, man. The training Thanks camp tour. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you know, especially in the middle of training camp. I know you got a busy schedule and everything, so we had to come see you. I feel like uh, we're in your office right now. <laughs> well, I feel like you just welcomed us into your office. Yeah, you know, it's a little messy today, but <laughs> I'll try to clean it up next time. Maybe a, a little bit more of a notice, and I might be able to help out with that. I like that. All right, so yeah. uh, I'm curious because we are here. And I think I got to address it. Your first year walking into this linebacker meeting room. To now being like the dude, the established, proven guy. Mm-hmm. Take us through the arc of that journey. Man, <laughs> um, where do I start? Well, came in as a DN, and uh, Coach Wilcox came up, and uh, he kind of like started me out in, out in another room, in the, the D-line room, so that was interesting, and realized I'm not really quite big enough for that one. <laughs> so then they moved me to uh, OLB, and then... Ended up here, and you know, I kind of found a home with the uh, start out with Coach DeRuiter, uh, and then uh, Coach Sermon came, and haven't looked back since. What is it about your position 
that makes you uniquely qualified to be an inside linebacker? Like, what do you love about it? What, why is this the right fit? Uh, I love the physicality, the ability to be able to run sideline to sideline and make as many plays as possible and just uh, really being able to impact a game uh, like every single play of the game and not just uh, whenever the ball goes to your side because you really control what what you're going to do on that play and what's going to happen uh, just by your um, – your effort toward to the to the ball and then just like fanatical effort man i mean just making plays <laughs> fanatical effort fanatical effort yeah that's yeah. a great quote um another great quote you shared with me on Sirius XM college you can listen to this conversation there as well you talked about prior to every training game you know where i'm going here mm. you put a piece of paper yeah. on your locker yeah. with the goals we asked you about it at media day and you said you can come check it out i want to do it the night before camp yeah. What are those goals you're willing to share? You know, the, the the sad thing is, though, is we don't have a locker room right now, so haven't actually set up yet. <laughs> it's actually <laughs> weird because I think it's supposed to be done the 15th, and if you guys were to be here probably on this weekend, I'd probably have them set, but I, I just don't have them set, and there's some questions that need to be answered before I kind of do those type of things uh, with uh, who's going to play next to me, who's playing in front, who's taking over Chris Palmer's spot. Um, you know, uh, how much depth do we have at the D line? Uh, who's all going to step up in the back? Um, it's just a few things that need to be answered in the next few days or so. And, um, and then I'll have a, have a little bit of a better, uh, better, uh, goal setting, you know, cause I'd like to be within 10. So I, I, I have a pretty good idea of a number right now, but yeah. How are you going to finally determine that then? Is- Man, uh, w- watching some film and seeing how I'm feeling and looking at the guys around me because, I mean, let's be honest, without the f- guys in the front and the guy who plays next to me, I really wouldn't be making a lot of plays. So, I heard that. I like it. Pay attention to your intention. Good intention. I like it. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of curious. We do this. We go all over the Pac-12 conference. We go around the country. We talk to different players. Usually we do what we just did. We just talk to the quarterback. That's the guy. Oh, yeah. yeah but for yeah. this program... <laughs> You've been the guy. Like, you're the dude now. Like, you're QB1, per se, in terms of interviews. You came to media day. Has, how much fun have you had? Because it doesn't happen for linebackers very often, yeah. at least in our experiences, Red Ash. We haven't talked to a ton of linebackers. Mm-hmm. Have you enjoyed it? Man, I love it. Uh, just, uh, like, being able to be here, just kind of just sh- shoot shit, I guess, is what people say. But, you know, just being able to hang out and talk to you guys on just a what is this Tuesday Wednesday I don't even know it's Who fall knows? camp so yeah. you know but just being able to be here and being able to have these opportunities to really talk to people and really just let them know what Cal football is all about it's, it's the greatest thing to me maybe this next question we should ask your SID Kyle McRae who's sitting right next to us but since I the very first time I've, I've talked to you or interviewed you I had a chance to hang out with you and Jordan Kanashik a little bit last year the media thing seems like it comes very natural to you. Like yeah. You seem very comfortable. You know how to hold a mic. You know how to talk. You know how to look people in the eye. Is that something that you had to work on, or have you always felt um, pretty comfortable with a mic in your you hand? You know, I've, I've always felt pretty comfortable. Just being able to uh, just share who I am with other people has been really easy to me. And uh, just uh, just being able to do this type of stuff. I mean, obviously, Jordan had his struggles. You know, he's kind of quiet, all that. So. That's that's where I kind of had to <laughs> had to step up and take the role, you know, make sure everybody knows that we're not just all quiet, uh, quiet people with uh, zero personality. So I hope he <laughs> I, I hope he's listening to this. So <sighs> uh, you I, guys I, were the yin and yang, but I, oh uh, yeah, 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 you, yeah, you were the yin and yang. No doubt. <laughs> yeah, we should like go back to the pods, right down mm-hmm. there. Where you guys can take a nap, play video games, <laughs> remember that tour. Um, okay, so speaking of, you, you've also you came in here as a spry teenager. Mm-hmm. You're not a teen anymore. Oh no, no, old man. Not anymore, old man. I actually, just had my birthday. What was it yeah, three days I, ago? That's twenty one. Twenty one. Yep. I mean, man. I'm a little bit embarrassed that I didn't know until about five minutes ago that you just turned twenty one because wow. I would have brought you something like a cupcake or. Something. Oh. Oh, yeah. Like, what do you do? Hurts a little bit. But tell me hurts. what you did for your 21st birthday that well, is appropriate to share on the Oh, the yeah. No, podcast. of course it is. I mean, if Kyle's going to stop me, good luck. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no. I mean, I woke up at, uh, what was it, 6.45, got here, worked out, went to practice, watched some film, went to meetings, went to sleep. That was my birthday. It was no. awesome. It was I awesome. I don't believe you. 
It was you awesome. You didn't try a beer for the first time? Ah, uh, no. I mean, you know, we're in season now, so I'm not a huge drinker. Okay. Yeah. Are you going to celebrate your 21st birthday after the season? You know, possibly. Okay. Possibly. I don't know. I'm not. Yogi's got a new spot down in Venice, so I'm just going to throw that out oh, there. He throws man. a good party, so maybe we can. Okay. Hey. Hey, I'm, o- I'm always down for for a little bit of fun, so. <laughs> All right, we'll not, check with compliance. Just, just we'll nothing illegal, you know? Well, hey, I won't even be on the team, so there <laughs> you go. Thank God. That's 21. A guy. 21's a big deal. What, what did you do for your 21st? Um, yeah, can <laughs> I can share on the Yoga Math podcast. I wasn't in season. I wasn't playing a sport. I she was a Hall of Famer, uh, by the way. <laughs> True story. I was in Boston. I was going to, uh, it was a summer, I guess, before my senior year. And I was taking classes. And I went and had a Bloody Mary by myself in between classes because it was, I wanted to try what alcohol was like. Yeah. And I, I, it was good. I enjoyed it. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Very that was nice. my 21st birthday. I like that. Mm-hmm. Why do I feel like you went to Vegas for your 21st? <laughs> I see where you're going with that, but I was in college at the University of Pittsburgh. My birthday's in September. So Miami. And we had a game. <laughs> and uh, post-game, I went to the bar that I was, hard to believe, a bouncer at. Yeah, <laughs> I was. That's a true story. <laughs> Who are you kicking out? <laughs> yep. I actually talk. I usually would just de-escalate everything. That's, I'd be like, oh, let's oh, just yeah. talk about it. So we went to just that place. Just you'd hug it out. Like, hug, it'd be like starting as a brawl, and then they'd be exactly. hugging and crying within exactly. minutes. Exactly. And uh, it was, it was, you know, we played Rutgers. I played well. You know how it is after games. You go out with your families. Oh, My yeah. parents came, and they also thankfully were there to – yeah, they helped me. Let's just say they helped me leave the establishment. I, oh, I may yeah, have needed yeah. a little bit of help on my way out. But regardless, um, speaking of help, Coin Dang. Yeah. We all watched Last Chance You. I'm sure you did. He, you know, he, it took a while for him to get like a sound bite. I was kind of like, disappointed. Episode seven. I was, or, I was disappointed. I'm not even going to lie. But did you guys talk about that? Uh, we just kind of like mentioned it a little bit, mainly uh, just asking him about like what was it like having like cameras literally follow you everywhere in this mm. little tiny city of what was it like 400 people yeah. what did he say and he was just like uh, it was kind of like weird like the first like few weeks but then you just kind of got used to it because he said everybody was really cool the producer and all the mic and camera guys so he had a good time that's how they get you once you have once the cameras are around for long oh, enough yeah. you kind of forget that they're there is the drive yeah and Yogi Roth knows very well. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. Okay, so <laughs> if, you were, you to sleep. if you are now, right, you've been around for a long time. If you were a producer, you're going to produce the Evan Weaver story, right, for The Drive. Mm-hmm. It's a pre-production meeting right here. What, what do you hope your story is in this final year for you with some holes on this defense that you can't wait to figure out and set your intention up in a few days' time? Yeah, I mean, um, what I hope my story is is just – Helping this team to get back to a winning program, you know, just back in the was it oh four, oh five, oh six, those type of days, you know, when you get consistently nine, ten, eleven, twelve wins a season, and just being able to consistently beat the teams that are so-called powerhouses, and not just stealing one every year, you know, just being able to do that and really figure that one out would be awesome, and I feel like if that could be my legacy, the being part of the dude that. Uh, being part of the team that just brought brought it up and really turned Cal into like a true powerhouse. I love that word legacy. You read that book this summer? I did not. It's a heck of a book. Check check it out. All right, I will. <laughs> Is it on audio? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's a that's an interesting question because. I give my husband a really hard time because he tells people that he, oh, I read that book. And I'm like, you didn't read that book. You listened to that book when you were driving in the car. They're, that's different. But that's because I'm a jerk. I, I I do do the I'm like, you life. didn't read it. Yeah. That's uh-huh. very good. Okay. So I got to ask you about the other side of the ball before we let you go. Um, just talk to your quarterback. And he talked about like that group just connecting, you know, mm-hmm. becoming just, you know, better relationship wise on the field. Obviously, another year older, more mature, some new yeah. faces. What have you noticed? Because you guys did that on defense, right? You were part of that transition. What have you noticed about that side of the ball, which clearly hopes they perform a little bit you know, more efficient than they did a year ago? I mean, we got some dogs now. Mm. <laughs> we really do. Like Some of the new guys, are, they like to fight and they're a little scrappy. You never really saw that uh, from, mm. uh, from anybody else last year. But uh, I, I feel like uh, Chase has done a great job. Um, Jeremiah had a great scrimmage. Jeremiah Hawkins had a great scrimmage. 
Um, Marcel Dancy has been great. Um, Chris Brown has been great. And just uh, being able to being able to like see all these guys really just pick up their game and really just light and day different than than uh, last year. This really? is kind of ridiculous, to be honest. I'm 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 expecting big things from them. That's all I'm gonna say is I'm expecting big okay. things. So, I mean, I don't know if you want to quote me, but. We're, that's what we're doing. Yeah. Here. We're, we're close. Well, being recorded. I, I, I guess if that's what this is, but um, no, um, yeah, no, yeah, they're going to be, they're gonna be so recorded? much better. Yeah. Oh, but that why I'm holding the microphone right <laughs> yeah. now. Jeez. This is just extensive media training that, <laughs> oh, that, okay. that Kyle brought us in for. Great, great. <laughs> but yeah, it's interesting though because you bring up three names that that Chase mentioned to us just a few minutes ago. Um, so it feels like those are those are three guys that we're that we're obviously excited to see. What's going to be the one thing that you're going to feel like, okay, this was a successful season. My last season at Cal, I'm going to feel like I did everything I could is going to be what? Back to all championship. Yeah. And that's it. That's what everybody works for. And we feel like we have the guys on defense to do it. And we feel like the offense can pick it up this year. So we'll see. I love it. You, you kind of snap back into linebacker mode right there with that mm-hmm. answer. Like that was like helmet was on cheeks are red. Like look out. Oh man. Watch out, guys. I know. Ted Robinson and I are so pumped to get here. I have goosebumps right now. I just got goosebumps. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's All right. go. So on that note, on that note, we're out of here. <laughs> All right. Best of luck. Yeah. Stay healthy. Cannot wait to hear what you eventually post up on that lock. We'll be sure to put yeah. that one on I'll the I'll let drive. you know. All right. Thank you, guys. Evan Weaver. You buying it? 21st birthday? Just kind of mm. did a football day? Yeah. I don't know. I guess I have. He has a very believable face. I buy it. I buy it. Yeah. He's, so, he's so focused, he dialed is. in. I, yeah, I, okay, I buy it. But I, I was slightly disappointed, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I, I'll, that bodes well, though. That bodes well. If I was, if, I'm going to go tell Justin Wilcox that he did not celebrate his 21st birthday, and I'm sure Coach is going to be happy. So Yeah, yeah, you got a lot more things, I think, to celebrate. Yeah. I, okay, takeaways from today. You, you came to scrimmage. You've been here a couple times now in training camp. Yeah, I have officially. So I've been back from maternity leave for three days, and two of them I've been at Cal. So I think <laughs> that's, that's a pretty... You're an uh, expert. Yeah, I, no. I... Kind of what we talked about earlier. I'm, I'm excited about this team. I think um, there's just a really good vibe around this program. It seems like a, you know the guys. Um, you walk around and you see them. They're cow guys. Like they're they're smart and they are thoughtful and they are tough and they have a chip on their shoulder. I think of getting closer. You know, it, it, they got closer to what their goals were last year. They made a bowl game. They didn't win that bowl game, and they didn't win the Pac-12 North. And ultimately, as, as we just heard Evan say, Pac-12 championship, that's the goal. So I don't think um, that it's you know out of the realm of possibility that that could happen and we could see Cal surprise a lot of people this year. But I just love I love talking to these guys. Like, they just, you know, you go around and we get to talk to so many interesting people, and, and you've been doing this podcast and talking to a ton of great guests. And we got a lot of great personalities here in the Pac-12. But, but every time I come here, and I, I tell Kyle this, uh, when you talk to Cal guys, you leave feeling good. Yeah. And and that is certainly the case today. What was your biggest takeaway? Well, great to see you back on the beat. Thank you. you. Know, fired up. Uh, I think this is going to be a real consistent team. And Ted and I started tracking this a couple of years ago in the booth on forced errors. He's a tennis guy. He might have the best job of all time because he does all of our baller football games and basketball games. In the offseason, he does like the French Open and Wimbledon. Ted's the man. Like as well as the Olympics, right? Yeah. He's He's a G. Uh, but that being said, when you watch tennis, like guys, it's just kind of like who screws up first, loses the point. So we started tracking that a couple years ago in the booth of unforced errors. And Cal had a lot of unforced errors last year on offense, right? If you look at all the turnovers, you know, Arizona game. And I think they had the lead and didn't score an offensive touchdown and lost the game, you know, because of the turnovers that they gave up in the second half. I, I don't think you'll see that this year. I don't think they're going to hurt themselves. I think athletes, when you take away the thing they – they cherish the most, which is the game and wins and losses. That's how lessons get taught. Like, I just think, like, if you take away playing time or they lose because of an unforced error, those mistakes don't happen again. And I think this is going to be a more mature team because they're older naturally. They're more competitive because they've added new faces, defense, but specifically offensively, the skill positions. And I don't think they're going to hurt themselves. And I think that might be like, – you could argue that's two wins. Yeah. So I think this is a team that – well, they'll sneak up on people like Utah did five years ago, and nobody wants to play this team. And I think even early on, you know, they got to go against Jake Mayer, UC Davis. He's a prolific passer, but this defense is loaded. 
Then they go to UW. If you're going to play UW any time, I think you want them early in the season with all the losses. Mm-hmm. And some unknowns out there, certainly. I yeah. mean, I think that there's there's a lot of unknowns with, with UW. And I, I can't believe we didn't ask Evan Weaver about going back and playing in Seattle early on. He's yeah. spoke Spokane guy. Yeah. All right. We'll get him. We'll, we'll bring him back. We'll on. bring him back. At, we'll ask him about it at your 21st birthday. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. I love it. All right. Well, I can't wait to ask you more. We're going to kind of keep hitting the road here in the Pac-12 conference. All the South is done. You can check it out. YogiRoth.com or Sears XM College. Also, if you want college football news, Ash, just subscribe to the How Great Is Ball newsletter. Every week, you're going to get something in your inbox, a couple nuggets I around it, the country, the around the conference, some takeaways that you know we don't always get to share, share in a three and a half hour broadcast. So hopefully you enjoy some of those and, and some articles that hopefully inspire you around the power of play and of course, college football. So we're out of here. I can't wait to go to the next tour. Is how great ball, how great is ball training camp tour rolls on. Ashley, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Peace.